supposed to watch, so I watched him T-bill. Nobody cares what you do in life as long as you win. Uh, Urban Meyer, uh, obviously, is a great coach. I've talked to about seven astronauts. It's so awful to have to talk to these old people. to be at a football game and I went to the Ohio State football games although I didn't graduate from there and I just loved them. My father took a family every year from the time I was little we would go and now I was in Florida so I, who, was I, who was I supposed to watch? So I watched him t -bill. and he was magnificent and he had a magnificent coach and it was all that excitement. In the meantime Ohio State was doing well. And we don't do so well in Columbus unless Ohio State football team is doing well. I mean, that's, that's all we live for. And so when I heard that Tebow was going to go to Denver, and then I hear he's been winning games at, at the last second, and people don't know how he does it, but the point is he wins. See, who cares? Nobody cares what you do in life as long as you win. And then his um, coach has... Um, moved to Ohio State, and we're so excited because with our coach being taken away, and I don't think he did a single thing wrong, uh, we're all excited now because now we have Tim Tebow's, Tebow's coach, and uh, it may take him two or three years, but we know that he will have a great time, and oh, we love the Ohio State football games. It's just, the, there's nothing like it. Uh, Urban Meyer, uh, obviously, is a great coach. Now... When he was down here, I think he beat Ohio State once. That doesn't seem possible, but I guess somebody said he did. Uh, but that's all right, because now he's off to Ohio State. That's, that's his home state anyway, and he, and he wanted to go there. And it's a strange thing about Columbus, Ohio. A lot of people go, and they travel, and they go this place and that place, and they end up back again in Ohio. Another thing I'm going to talk about today is my secret. And the secret is... If you like to talk like I do, you have to discipline yourself. So when you go to talk to somebody at a party or different places, and especially people you don't know, you can ask them questions. I've talked recently, well, in the last 30 years. <laughs> to me, that's recent. <laughs> and when you turn 80, everything seems like it happened yesterday. I've talked to about seven astronauts, and I have sort of research that astronaut type of thing because when I was in um, down here in Florida I watched one go up and I'm probably one of the few people in the United States I went home to California and I watched it come down and I watched another one come down and in California we hear the boom boom that's two booms that they always give when they come in to land now if you want to have a discussion with other people who are around the astronauts, you can ask them why they think there's two booms. Now I've read and I've read and I've read and I'm not too sure, but it has since the uh, one in uh, England and London, what was the name of that big airplane, uh, it also had two booms. It didn't sound the same. Uh, it went boom, boom. Uh, it must have something to do with the configuration of the uh, airplane plus the speed. But that's something you can ask an astronaut, and they'll all come up with different questions. Ask an engineer, and they'll go on for a whole evening about why, and they're, not, they're never the same thing. So uh, when you do get into something like that, and you're at a banquet, or you're just in a person's home, when you sit with somebody, they don't want you to talk. I've decided nobody wants me to talk. That's why I'm doing this. All right. Uh, you have to have enough knowledge of that person or what they are doing or what they would like to do. Or if you don't have any knowledge at all, you can start with that. Just say, I have no idea what you do when you're not an astronaut. And uh, there's other people, like if you're into sports or into golf, and down here in Florida, you better know something about golf, enough to ask questions. And uh, since our family knows Jack Nicholas and Barbara and... Uh, uh, we uh, we have always enjoyed golf, and some of us play, and some people like me played once and gave it up. And so um, the next thing you need to know with this secret of asking questions is to look them in the eye. But that's that's so hard when you're at a dinner table. 
you practically have to reach forward and sort of around and around like this. But you have to because people like to be looked in the eye. But most people don't like to look somebody else in the eye. And so you have to learn to do that. That, that isn't something that most people want to do. Now the other secret is though, if you're a teenager or 20-somethings, and you think, well, you're, you know, you're not, it's so awful to have to talk to these old people. And the one thing you can ask them is, this will really bring up a wonderful conversation, is what did you do in high school? Did you play sports? Did you uh, sing? Did you do anything like that? And especially sports. I, my mother wrote in her grandmother book that she used to play baseball, and it was one other sport I can't remember, and I was shocked. I'd never seen her even run, let alone play something. And so, and when they're, when they're gone, they're gone. You can't ask them. And you say, well, what's, what's the difference? Well, it's a, a strange thing. In every family, there's about one person that looks into all the uh, people that have gone before, the, their ancestors, and they want to know about them. For instance, I have a grandmother on my father's side, a great-grandmother or a great-great, who also came from Virginia, but the Ohio men were rustling cattle to Virginia, and she wanted to go back with one of them and marry him. And so the parents wouldn't allow her, and so she threw her saddle out of the second-story window and got on the horse, and that next day they were married, and uh, that would have been one of my grandmothers back when, way back when, in the 1700s. And so it, it, somebody will be interested, and then everybody else gets interested. But if you don't have somebody to do all that, now, of course, I have boxes full of stuff, which doesn't help anybody. And our family, I've had a different life. I think you could call this what I'm doing a different life. And I imagine you have, and I imagine everybody has. And so it's always interesting to see what you can get out of somebody else that you had no idea they ever did such a thing. And you ask, and you will find out very interesting, very interesting situations that you had no idea what these people did before. And, and my father was a farmer. So I never thought to ask him. Well, I have seen, I did see the farm uh, because he kept paying for it all his life and he liked to go down and shoot pheasants on pheasant day. And I think that's the only reason he kept it. But anyway, it was a good investment. And uh, he uh, went from the farm to the school in town and then he went to Ohio State. And so he really, really had a fabulous life starting on the farm. My mother started on the farm. She too somehow got everything together and went to Miami University, but unfortunately it was in 1918, 1919, and that was the great flu that came over, not only the United States, but a lot of countries. And she was interested in one boy, she said not serious, but she was interested, in, but he went off to the army and died in the army camp here in the United States. And finally, it was so bad that they had to shut Ohio, uh, Miami University of Ohio, shut it down, and she had to come home. And from then on, her life uh, had many ins and outs and ups and downs, but she finally got her teaching credential, and that started her off on her career, back in the days when most women didn't have any careers. So to me, I think if, if, if the, you, the teens, and you, the 20-somethings, could listen. I know my, grand, my great aunt told me once when I was about five, she said to me, and she leaned way down, and she wasn't very big, she was about this big. She leaned way down anyway, and she said, Patty, she said, you're not going to believe this. But she said, pretty soon you're just going to turn around just in one circle, and that won't take very long, and you're going to be as old as I am. And I looked at her, and I thought, oh, I don't want to be as old as she is. And that's not true. To be that old will take years and years and years, and how can you just turn around and all of a sudden you're old? And, of course, she was right. And her name was Great Aunt Myrtle. <laughs> and she was great fun. And she ran her own camps in her house because, and, and my mother and father, when when they went down to visit in Florida once, they went to see, see if they could find Aunt Mert. They heard she'd broken her arm. So they went to St. Petersburg and in this uh, sort of a hotel type place. And they said, is Aunt Mert here? And we said, here, she's broken her arm. 
and they said, and she was about 80 something something, and they said, well, no, she's out on a date with another man. So I thought, well, that, that would be a great life if you could just keep going like that. If you can keep your feet moving and your brain following, why, that's it. My motto is, if it doesn't hurt you, and if it doesn't hurt anybody else, and it doesn't hurt uh, anybody emotionally or physically or in any way, and it doesn't hurt the earth or any physical things, then you can, whatever you want to do, do. Because, you know, if it doesn't affect anybody else, it'll just affect you. So if, if you're a blonde, then I have some things to tell you because, um, to help you get along, because in my day there were only like two of us in one class. If you can imagine that now. And blonde and blue-eyed and when, and, and I had a time in high school with professors who just didn't think I knew anything. So I worked hard. I worked hard at starting about sophomore year in high school. And I became on the National Honor Society and I got my straight A's finally my senior year and I went off to Ohio Wesleyan and I had all of this all over again with mostly men looking down at me like, they don't call on you. They don't even know you're there. You're invisible. So when you get old, you're invisible. And when you're blonde, blue-eyed, you're sort of invisible. And so the, you, you need some secrets to, to uh, fix that. And so I did. I, my freshman, sophomore year, I was in the, uh, uh, the society that is before the, the greatest one you can be in, and that's Phi Beta Kappa. So, life is fun, life is interesting, and I like to talk, and that's why I'm here with you. Now, of course, my son is trying to tell me what to do. It's something about, if you, at, at the end of this, it's a place to sub sub subscribe and put your name, and then, um, and what else is I going to say? Just tell me. If you like me at all, you're supposed to push the like, L-I-K-E button down here. And if, if I'm one of your favorites, uh, you know, after you watch me a, a few times, maybe I'll be one of your favorites. Don't forget, down in the comments, put what you want me to talk about. And also, just tell things that you want to talk about, which I've already said. And also, don't forget, is there anything else I'm to say? Subscribe. I don't know why, and I don't know any of this. I'm just sitting in front of a camera, blogging away. And uh, my son will take care of the rest, which is a good deal. But he's still trying to tell me what to do. I don't like that.